Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Lines. I'm your host, Shane Mercer. That guy over there, Andrew Pace, you know him. But the other guy in the window, maybe you don't. That is Kenny Huber, the golden goose himself. Kenny, welcome to Behind the Lines. We're so excited to have you here, man. Absolutely excited to be here. Hey, it's, it's great. And so today's episode for all of you out there is all about the setup. You are going to go behind the curtain in this episode, and we're going to give you a look at Kenny's setup, how he bets. And we're going to give you a look at Pace's, and we'll give you a look at mine as well, which totally pales in comparison to the two of them. <laughs> but we will have a lot of valuable insights and knowledge when it comes to setting up the perfect betting environment. And what also, you know, what what Pace has and what Kenny has is really incredible. It's like a super betting setup. But what I have is much more uh, accessible for the average rec better out there. So we will show you that and we'll go through some of the options that, you know, you have available to you. Uh, before we dive into it, though, I have to remind all of you out there to like, download, follow us on the socials at Inplay Live and subscribe to the podcast. And if you want to join the Inplay Live community, you like what you see when you see their setups, well, you can bet live with these guys, believe it or not, if you join Inplay Live. And we have a special promo for you. That is behind the lines. That's the promo code you can use. All right, guys, we got all of that stuff out of the way. Let's get right into the setup. We want to first start off with you, Kenny, since you're our special guest today. And I've already had a look at this video. Kenny, this video uh, and your setup is just absolutely incredible. I've worked in live television for quite a number of years, and your setup is almost like a network television control room. It is, it is really pretty awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and show all of you out there. And if you're listening, have a listen. Kenny does describe a little bit of it. But if you get a chance, watch this on YouTube too, because you don't want to miss this cool video um, that we're about to show you here. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty remarkable setup. All right, let's go ahead and play that now. So when I think about infrastructure, um, I think about it in three parts, basically. So first would be um, viewing of the games. Um, I have a uh, three by three video wall, 55 inch monitors, uh, be a 165 inch screen from corner to corner. Um, I can control this uh, from my cell phone. Um, right now I have it on the nine by nine, but I can say this is one of my more favorites. This basically makes a 110 inch screen in the upper left. Um, and then I have five individual screens. So say it's a football Sunday, I'll, I'll put the main game I'm focused on in the upper left, and then I put the uh, other five games I wanna watch um, going around the edge. So that's basically uh, handles me covering, you know, viewing the content that I wanna see. Um, and then we'll get into now the, uh, the actual infrastructure for me betting and looking at the lines. Um, first part is I have a trussing system that I put in um, that's uh, enough to hold plenty of weight. Um, I use a little uh, 34 inch widescreen turned vertical. Um, that, that basically, that screen is basically my reference if I'm looking up injuries, pregame lines, anything like that. And here, I'm gonna pull out a little bit. Um, we have a, a 65 inch curved uh, 4K TV. Um, and here where I can easily view eight books. Um, and this is uh, suspended directly above my head. So for my viewing angle, I'd be looking down at the games and then I can just peek up and I can see all the lines uh, for the games. Um, also, I have a uh, little custom built, uh, converted a book holder with some magnets. So I have uh, some quick draw devices as far as uh, cell phones, uh, iPads, in case I see a line that I really like that um, at a certain book that I really want to pound. Um, so that basically covers the um, how I go about betting, which would be the second prong. And then as a uh, podcaster for In Play Live, um, I, uh, I have a, another laptop here that would have Zoom running on. Um, I have a webcam mounted directly underneath my monitor, um, as well as my uh, microphone. Holy crap, <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> I like my gadgets. <laughs> you know what, though? One thing, guys, I just got to say, he didn't talk about his chair. <laughs> no, he you, didn't. He got a pretty comfortable chair that you sit on, too, no? Yeah, I, I got a nice uh, nice lazy boy rocker uh, that reclines, and I've uh, I've known to, to fall asleep in between action on from time to time, that's for sure. 
Uh, Kenny, give me a sense of how you created this. I'm assuming you didn't start off with, you know, a big 62 inch screen curved screen mounted on a bar, you know, and then right. you got the big, the big TV with all the monitors. I mean, t- talk to me about how you built this well, over you, time. I'll tell you what my first setup was, and you may laugh at this, but my first setup was at a bar um, called Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't know if they have them up in Canada, but they're, yeah, we got they're, all, they're all over the U.S. And they have all the Buffalo Wild Wings in the U.S. have the Sunday ticket. They have the NFL Sunday tickets. So they get all the NFL games. So I would get in there at like 11 o'clock, get myself in a nice spot at the bar and go there with an iPad, a laptop with like an extra, extra viewing monitors, whip out from the laptop and, and, uh, you know, on a phone on my side. And that's how I basically would bet and watch all the games at the Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, after my first season of making several hundred thousand, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just going to build something at my house. And, uh, and my friend Rick came over and I built this nice wall, you know, upstairs with just regular TVs. Um, but then I wanted something more and I looked in the video walls and, and different things. And I, that's how I kind of got to this point. Um, but yeah, it's just everything's kind of evolved a little bit, a little bit over time is adding different pieces in that just make make my job that much easier. But I think at this point, I'm kind of at the saturation point where I don't really have any more room to expand or, or improve upon. <laughs> Hold on. Do you, do you even feel like you need to expand? <laughs> no, no, I think I'm I think I'm pretty much there. I'm pretty yeah. much where it needs to be. Yeah, I think you're there. I think you're there. You know, one thing that also stood out in that, uh, you know, I was talking about it looking like a, a network television control room. It's actually in some ways even more sophisticated because you're controlling everything on your phone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the different, and I, I meant to show the full 165 too, because, which is like, if say it's just the Super Bowl on, I'll have it take up the whole wall, which is, uh, which is a pretty massive screen to have, you know, not from my viewing distance, it's only around 10 feet away. Um, it's a pretty massive screen to, to be, uh, viewing a game on. But, um, um I, you know, speaking of phones too, you also had that, that holder there for all of your different cell phones. <laughs> You're working with a lot of, uh, a lot of phones. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I and I and uh, I tried I tried to go to an actual sports book in Atlantic City with that holder, and I had all the phones and everything. And uh, one of the sports books, you know, the the security guard comes over, and goes, "You can't have that many phones." I go, "Why not?" And then they ended up um, Caesar Sportsbook doesn't like the would wouldn't does not welcome my business when I bring they they limit me to like two or three devices. They're like, "You can't have more than that." And then I went over to MGM and I went with a bunch of people. And we had like a you know a thousand hour bar tab. They're like, you can bring fifty devices. We don't care what you're doing. <laughs> I, I imagine Kenny that there are a lot of books that don't want your business. Oh my god, that's incredible. Uh, it, it, that, that is that is just in, insane. I mean, the fact that you're trying to carry your your you know, a phone holder around to, <laughs> to sports books and their bars. It's just uh, an, an incredible thought. Um, you know, if, if there was a piece in your setup that you absolutely could not live without, what would that single piece be? Um, I mean, just for the comfort, like, like I, I like having the phones cause I can go mobile. So I'm not like always having to be home when I want to bet. Like if I want to go out to a game with my friends, like I have the phones, but what what I really love about being home is having my 65 inch four four K curved TV uh, up above me where I can just see eight sports book lines. Otherwise, I feel like I'm flying blind. If I'm just on my phone trying to you know find the best line, trying to flip through the apps, it's 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 so it's such a pain and and you know I'll never find the best line. Whereas if I if I'm looking at all these books at one time, I I'm going to find the best line and and that's the one I'm going to bet. Yeah, if you can't find the best line with all of that stuff you've got there, <laughs> we, we've got a bigger problem, right? Um, Again, yep. though, Shane, that speaks to obviously last week when we were talking about uh, the betting advice that we wish we knew and being able to scan multiple lines. Some people use providers to do that for them, right, where they, they see that, but that oftentimes isn't live. So live, to see the best lines quickly, Kenny's got that set up so he can see the the eight books at once where he can go, bam, oh, that, that's an outlier. It's a lot easier to see when you see it all at the same time. Right. You know, and, and, and you know, Kenny, give us all a sense of, of how important it is 
to have a, an environment like that to really be able to kind of dial in for for a, a betting session? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So like, obviously comfort. So uh, that would be like, first and foremost for me is, you know, like I've been, you know, at sports folks where it's real loud and I'm trying to listen to Andrew and trying to talk to Andrew. And it's just, it's just a very uncomfortable environment where like, I felt like there was like no way I was going to possibly get bets in and win. So like I ended up leaving there and I was all aggravated, got back to my more comfortable setup. And, and it's just, I think, being comfortable and having everything exactly where you need it to be. Cause sometimes there's, we only have five, five to 10 seconds, to get these bets in. Um, and it's, and it's, it's, you have to put yourself in a, in a position for success and you have to do that with your setup and be comfortable with your setup. Know how the sports books are going to take the bets, you know, like, like kind of be able to find those lines that much quicker and everything. It's, uh, uh, at, at times it could be almost like a fastest finger competition, um, of who, you know, who can get that bet in the quickest. Do you ever feel or at any point maybe maybe early on when you're you know we're in the development of your setup because you do have so much going on do you ever feel lost do you ever feel like i'm not sure where to look right now <laughs> or you know as, as you're searching for lines or watching games and try, sort of trying to do it all well i i do sometimes with because even with having the eight books up i i have I have over 300 active sports book accounts right now. So, um, not different, not with different sports books, although I probably shouldn't say that, but, but the, I have over 300 active sports book accounts right now with probably ranging with 50 different sports book providers. Um, so it's, uh, sometimes I'll with, you know, the eight obviously doesn't even scratch the surface of 50. So, um, you know, and, and what's great about it in play live is there, you know, we're talking about, you know, it's available at this book. I'm like, oh, I forgot. I forgot. I even had an account there and I, and I flip it open real quick in the browser. Um, so sometimes I can get lost with just focusing on the eight that I have open where there might be one, you know, you know, down the, down the list where that, that would be probably the only time that I'm lost. I'm like, oh crap, I forgot about this book or I forgot about that book. Um, is, uh, the, the only time I kind of feel lost. I'm like, you know, it's just, I forgot about that book completely. <laughs> pace it's almost the reverse of of not having enough books it's well i've got too many books and i forgot about right. it <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah kenny's got some good stories which uh i've i have a few of myself where you open up your spreadsheet and go oh right you find ten thousand there you find five thousand there and you can have a twenty thousand dollar day collecting old old chunks of money um that you forgot about or maybe the withdraw and verification process got a little bit too steep during a really peak betting time that you went, Hey, I'm not even going to deal with this right now. And that's happened to both Kenny and I a few times. So those are good days. The old uh, <laughs> collect the dust, find the, it's like uh, the equivalent of being a kid when you look in the couch yeah. and find a couple quarters, you know, it's good. I was just going to say finding money in the couch, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Kenny, obviously your setup is extremely sophisticated and a lot of our audience out there are either recreational betters or, you know, they're aspirational pro betters. You know, they'd like to become pro one day or they're working, you know, they're somewhere on the path. What sure. would you say to somebody who's, who's early on in the path? Uh, first and foremost, I would, I would, the, a very inexpensive piece of equipment that you get would be the 4k TV. You don't necessarily need a 65 inch, um, you know, uh, you know, because where you need to see eight books, but I would say get a 42 inch. You can get them for 200 hours at Best Buy. Um, get yourself a, a laptop, you know, an i6 laptop, you know, five, six hundred dollars. Um, so you could be all set up infrastructure wise in my mind for like, under eight hundred dollars with the four K TV, so you got a great display. Um, put it in a desk environment, um, and and you know just have a have a uh, laptop hooked up to it, and you'll be you'll be on your way to go. I mean, you'll be able to to do you know pretty much anything that 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 I can do here um, because none of the none of the feeds are truly live, which I think you guys covered in one of your podcasts. So so like I like being able to watch the sports because I like. I love sports and love being able to watch it. But in reality, outside of a couple different sports, I don't have to watch the games. I'm more looking at the numbers on my, on my books, depending on the sport and, and everything. But, um, so if I were to say to a new better to starting off their setup is just get yourself a decent laptop. That's not going to choke with having six, six, uh, 
browser windows open, which some of the lower end computers would, like a Chromebook wouldn't work. And Chromebooks, just on a side note for anybody new, Chromebooks don't don't um, aren't geo comply compliant. They um they cannot uh, if you live in Ontario or any of the United, any of the states in the in the U.S. you can't use a Chromebook to um to to, to bet with. Um, they won't uh, they won't geolocate. Um, but anyway. Uh, neither here nor there. Just get yourself a decent five six hundred dollar laptop and a 42, 42 inch four K TV to start um, and build from there. Look, see, it's it's really not not that hard to sort of you know start the build right start yeah. start constructing that that setup and over time as you as your bankroll grows your setup can grow with it right absolutely absolutely. Um, Kenny, is there anything else really important about your setup that you'd like to share before we uh, before we let you go? We know you got to take off. Yep. Uh, no, there's nothing else I uh, I can think of. It's just uh, like like I said, it's a it was a building process for me, and it'll be for for everybody. But uh, yeah, to start small and keep building as you can afford to. Right, and you know the other aspect of your setup there that that actually has nothing to do with betting per se is the fact that you're live streaming yourself a lot of the time too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? right. And so, <laughs> yeah, you know, again, guys, just a reminder out there: if you do, if you're not a part of the Inplay Live community, Kenny is the kind of guy that you can bet with live uh especially in football and college basketball season the guy is live all the time he puts in hours a week i'm talking like 40 plus hours a week of live streaming betting it's it's unbelievable uh how hard this guy works uh kenny thanks for joining the show man really happy to have absolutely you. thanks absolutely. my pleasure take care right. guys take care buddy wow pace what a what a setup he's got that's uh you know really really something special uh yours is <laughs> like Kenny's, but I mean, first, just give me a sense of of when you first saw Kenny's setup. What went through? Yeah, that? well, I think actually I'm I'm gonna rewind the tape a little bit because <clears throat> I look at that and I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a sports better that goes, hey, I'm listening to these podcasts. I'm interested in making money off of sports betting. Um, I want to learn as much as I can. And you see that, and you go, this isn't for me. Because you go, I can't get that. I can't do that. Uh, the makes the barrier to entry really intimidating and really unattainable. And I remember before I was a pro better, when I was starting to find some things that worked. And then when you start to find some things that work, maybe you start doing a little bit of research, finding out about other pros and things like that. And then what you typically see on the internet is pregame pros, and pregame pros are wagering thousands and thousands of dollars pregame on a wager because the ed the edge that they have is actually quite small they're razor thin edges um and then when you you know apply volume to it <clears throat> in order to actually make a living each wager needs to be so large that it makes a better that's you know betting less than a hundred dollars or less than a thousand dollars for that matter you know look at the course of a season and go this really isn't worth it this is too much work and too much stress and a lot of, you know, the dips and, and weathering all that where at the end of the season, you go, this, this just, this is for people that have big bankrolls only. And you might get that same sort of opinion after watching Kenny's clip there. And then especially when you watch mine, you're going to be like, what the fuck? This is, <laughs> this is crazy. So that's what, that's what makes me say, okay, let's rewind the tape. So I go back to my earliest betting days and there's a fundamental difference between Kenny and I. So Kenny talked about going to the sports bar and then bringing a setup with him where he was watching the game and then dictating what he was doing based on what was going on the game. Fair enough. But Kenny is largely the guy with that 65 inch screen with the eight books open at one time. And that is his specialty. And a lot of pro betters would follow suit with Kenny where they go. That is my way of making money. And that's where you actually start transitioning away from what's on the screen and start focusing more on the numbers and the books. There, it, there are countless professional sports bettors that never turn the game on, both pregame and live bettors. And they are basing all of the activity on line movement and line discrepancies before the game starts and then once the game is on. So... Kenny's setup, you could take the TV wall out of the equation entirely and just have the one monitor with the books open and be a six-figure per year sports betting professional. So from an intimidation standpoint, that really takes things, the weight off your shoulders, right? In my case, 
that wasn't who I was. That wasn't the way I made money betting on sports. How I made money betting on sports was having a really good understanding of what coaches will do in certain situations in certain sports compared to what I was being offered. So I was more of a make money on the book you have versus compare the books against each other in my early days. So because of that, the first thing that I did when I started having success was I went, okay, well, if I'm making money off this one game, shouldn't I try to see more games? So my setup was three TVs and, uh, they were all, they weren't even mounted. They were on, um, you know, just like a, a standard sort of TV coffee table type thing. And I bought all three of them off Craigslist. And I think I spent $200 or, or less on each one of them. And then it was coaxial cable. So Kenny was talking about not being able to get the games truly live. Well, right. at this time, they're pretty, you know, they're seven seconds latent from what's going on in the field. Like they're pretty good feeds. So, you know, you call up your cable provider company and you say, hey, I need two more boxes and and they come in and install them. And that was it for me. One sports book with three TVs. So almost the opposite of what Kenny was doing from the standpoint of sports books over over screens. Right. Right. Yeah. And then that grew to one sports book and six TVs. And my days, this is before in play live, would consist of a cell phone, right, an iPad and maybe a second iPad even. But I wouldn't have three different books. I'd have the same book. And I'd be flipping through the three books and I'd be sitting down just so casual, so you know, so lazy, so chill, so cozy and comfortable because I didn't need to compare lines. What I was doing was so effective and it was working so well that as long as I saw what was going on as close to real time as I possibly could, I knew exactly where the value was so much so that I would be, like I said, getting that same bet in with just my, you know, thumbs at on those three different books. So from a set, setup standpoint, it was a wall of TVs and, and, and just some handheld devices. So I got really good with the handheld devices and things like that. And then there's the process of evolution, right? Um, and that goes that goes two ways. Um, and I guess ultimately what I was getting at there was with just a few TVs up and your cell phone, you can make money from betting on sports uh, from that standpoint. And then to take that one step further, if you have strategies that you don't need to watch the game, then in theory, all you would actually need is your cell phone. So from an equipment setup there, as far as getting started goes, it's not what you don't have, it's what you do have. And that's a great mindset to apply to pretty much everything in life across the board. It's an amazing way to, to look at things. Um, but then the evolution of the, of the setup um, and the sports betting strategies is where things start to then evolve. So the, the, the one thing I was doing that was making me money well, maybe that's not as profitable anymore. Maybe that's been closed down by the sports books entirely, or maybe they've changed um, how they interact with the market. Maybe the sport has actually changed where what I was betting on isn't something that's, um, let's call it analytics forward, right? So a lot of bunting happened in the MLB 10 years ago that isn't happening today. Um, you know, if there was a way to wager on that in specific circumstances, maybe the books didn't change, but the fact that the sport has changed means that I've had to adapt and move on. And that's where you need to broaden your horizons and, and your equipment and your setup and your infrastructure so that you can succeed in different ways. And it's funny because Kenny and my path are so different but they've arrived now with almost identical setups. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, since, since you brought it up, let's let's have a look. Let's take a look okay. at your setup. Uh, you know, you've given us a, a great video as well, where we can, uh, you know, get a get a peek into your life, into your home, and take a look at your setup. All right. So off the bat here, I got my game changer here for a, a nice cocktail, and you can see that I don't live in a house like Kenny. Uh, Kenny has three levels at his place. Um, so I'm, I'm just a condo here. I got my two beautiful dogs. Um, and this is city living versus Kenny. Like I said, that lives at a house. So, um, I've got the three by three TV wall as well. Um, and first thing that I'm going to just touch on with that is with the three by three TV wall, um, there are solutions that are in this level of equipment and, and infrastructure that you can have that you can do for a lot more affordable than, than what I've done. But I've got matte screens. Now, these are freaking expensive. 
But the benefit of this is I will have sunlight gusting into my apartment, even with my blinds down, that make the reflection unwatchable for any standard television and certainly for a projector. So the first thing you're going to see that I'm going to do on a nice sunny day is I click my uh, blinds down. Um, even though I do have screens that don't reflect, uh, this helps me out a lot um, with my with my setup just from, you know, any, any super bright lights coming in. And this is my setup here back here. And I've got two chairs so that I got, um, a cockpit for, uh, any, any partner that's going to be betting with me, uh, on the right. And my setup doesn't have the big 65 inch screen and coming from the background of using a lot of devices. I usually have two iPads on it on the go and I've got the, uh, the iPad keyboard so that if I want to use them as touch screens, I can, but also they convert really well into computers. And what I like about the iPads is it gives you the option to use the app of the betting site, but also gives you the option of using a web browser like a computer. So I've usually got one of my MacBook Pros out there, um, my iMac on the left, which I usually have four books, and then I have multiple desktops going. So same as Kenny with the eight. I usually have four books up on each screen, and then I just you know command over to the other side and see my other four books. Um, and two really comfortable chairs so that you can be kind of uh, set up and rocking and rolling. I'll just run this again here. And you can see there now I'm on nine different feeds on the broadcast. In my bottom middle feed, I've actually got a split screen of four different games on there if I want to 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 really have a bunch of games on, which is really good for me on college football Saturdays. Same app as Kenny. So you see I go in here and I switch over with the big top left screen there, um, which, which makes for a really great viewing experience, especially for Sunday afternoons. Um, and then I switch back here to full screen and I can switch to any input at any one given time to... Um, to see a different game in full screen as well, which you've seen me uh, just switch over there. Uh, and then again, <clears throat> one more time. And the, the viewing experience with with that is crazy. All my neighbors and, and everyone in the high rises near me can, can see the game better in my, in my condo than they can see it in their own. And then I just went uh, back to nine there, which is just amazing for Sunday mornings, uh, Sunday morning football. So the crazy part about this is what's behind the scenes with everything. So... <clears throat> On the far left there, I have my matrix remote, which is the remote that controls what is broadcast onto the screens. Then I have the screen remote, which is what turns on the TV wall. And then I have six coaxial cable Shaw boxes, which is uh, the fastest available feeds um, that are out there for watching sports. Three uh, Apple boxes, and what's great about the three Apple TVs is I can broadcast streams to those. So a lot of sports books offer streams that are low latency. So I can broadcast the streams to those Apple TVs uh, that are that are a part of my input setup. Two Fire Cubes, uh, my Bose soundbar, and then those on the far right are HDMI switchers. So I have nine different feeds, but I actually have about 16 different devices. Nintendo, Xbox, um, all the Shaws, the Apples, the Amazon Fire Cubes, VPNs so that I can switch to Europe or into the United States because I'm in Canada so that I could get US and Europe feeds for certain sports on certain streaming platforms uh, with the accounts to have that. And then the HDMI switches allow for me to go from, say, my Apple to my Fire Cube uh, and back and forth. Um, <clears throat> really important part of anyone's setup, of course, if you're a member of InPlay Live, is to get your gun so that you can <laughs> fire that off when we hit a bet. But the blue light glasses, uh, with all this light coming in at you and you sitting there for a long time, those are very important. And I always have a few different uh, uh, screen cleaner, of course, to keep everything clean, um, and a few different headphones op headphone options, especially with live streaming or different broadcasts. One thing that's nice with a setup like this is if you have people in the room, uh, especially with Apple TVs, you can flip on um, uh, a broadcast through your headphones on the Apple TVs where you have one playing through the room, but also one that you're listening to as well. And then, of course, if you're on a live stream uh, um, with people in the room, you want to you want to have your headphones on. And then at the end there, I just showed a stack of MacBook Pros and iPads that I have on standby that are ready to use for the actual betting um, uh, of of different accounts. So if I if I have a sports book get limited in the middle of the day, I'll have those devices ready on standby to uh, 
to bring up and and put into action. So uh, pretty crazy setup. Um, obviously, uh, uh, pretty special and unique as well, and a, a real showstopper. When when people come in and see it, they can't believe what they they've seen. But a lot of research, a lot of energy, and a lot of effort went into this setup. Um, not just for me. This setup exists so that you don't have to have one. If I'm the one calling the bets and you're tailing me on live streams of InPlay Live, I have this for you so that you don't need to have it. Do you want it? Sure, it's super cool. But I've got all that set up so that, you know, I'm the one that's calling the wagers and you can follow me without putting in that same investment. And we know that you are tracking everything. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable to think yeah. of, of what you've got there and what you can monitor all at once in, in one moment. You know, uh, when you first showed me the video before the podcast, I think I made a message back to you. It's like, that's way too many controllers. I would lose track of just those controllers and what does what. Do you ever end up in a position where you're like trying to click a controller and it's not doing what you want it to do because, hey, wait, oh, crap, I picked up the wrong one. Yeah, well, I mean, that's where those switchers come in because they'll like a, like one one feed, like one individual HDMI input or or output from my matrix will have a Shawbox, an Apple, a Fire Cube, and a Nintendo on that same one. So I got to switch over with the switcher and then broadcast it full screen. If we're playing like you know full screen Mario Kart on this thing's pretty freaking cool, right? So. <laughs> So some of that can get a little bit confusing, but one piece that I am yet to install because the company hasn't figured out that I'm a, I'm a unique case. So apparently when they build these TV walls, they never get people that are looking to switch the feeds. They're corporate and they just broadcast the one game or right. the one advertising piece that they have. You'll see these, they ha they'll have TV walls like this in say a Lululemon retail shop and it's just running a clip of promotional, you know, maybe someone running and like in their products and things like that. So they're used for promotional content and then they're used for broadcasting the games. It's very rare that they have a company that actually says, Hey, we want to put nine different feeds up at once. So what they're doing right now is they're building me a device where I don't press any remotes anymore, nothing on or off. I just have presets that I click, which I do kind of have. I showed that on the phone, but presets for everything. So let's say I want to watch um, full screen on my Nintendo. I press power on that option on my app, which is being designed. It's a custom app that's being designed for my room. Um, I press that and all the TVs will turn on, the sound bar will turn on, and it'll go to that feed, and the Nintendo will turn on with that one press of the button. And then I'd press a different button, and, and yes, it would go to nine different feeds and the NFL channels that I want on at the uh, with just that one press of the button. So we're working on that. It's uh, was hoping it would be done by now, but it's, it's not quite finished. Well, they're making an app just for you. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a it's an app company that does they design these custom for people and they're they're not cheap yeah they're not cheap yeah i, I imagine that they wouldn't be i imagine that nothing uh about your setup is cheap it is very <laughs> uh expensive I, I don't even want to ask about how much you put into it but you know not necessarily you know accessible for the average sports better out there right yeah and i think that that's kind of why i rewound the tape to show people that you know things aren't as intimidating as they need to be. And I think if there was any one piece of advice, Kenny already said it, it's have a screen that you can see multiple books. And then if you want to watch the game, start with that one TV. And also too, I mean, with some of these subscription services and streaming services, they do have screen and screen. So, you know, if you do get a decent sized TV, you could put in theory two or four games on the one TV. Um, you know, that, that could still give you a bit of that same experience and then you build with success yeah you know you're you obviously didn't start you know, as you, you sort of described you didn't start out with all of that right you slow you've you've worked your way up to it um where do you see it going from here is it just the app and then you're done or do we have bigger plans i not that you need anything more i, I don't think well, again, I think Kenny touched on this about how, you know, he's out and about and maybe he didn't get the best line and things like that. And this is something Kenny didn't touch on. But the first time that I bet with Kenny um, on like a real, you know, a real betting day was in his house in New Jersey. He wasn't in his house in New Jersey right there. He was in his house in Pennsylvania. 
So you want to take things a step further here. This is now really getting into being a pro. Kenny got a house in New Jersey so that he could get New Jersey sports books. Oh, okay. <laughs> he so this is a guy. Who, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's wow. other benefits to buying that particular property. It's a shore house. You know, he goes out boating with the family in the summer and things like that. But he would drive to New Jersey every weekend to get the New Jersey sports betting lines. New Jersey was the first sports uh, state to legalize in 2018. So he, you know, he didn't want to up and move his family to New Jersey. So he's like, okay, I'm a pro and I'm going to invest in this. And yeah, there's other upside. I'm sure the real estate's gone up since that time. I'm sure that his, he's had some great family experiences at his shore house and some great vacations. And he was able to access those New Jersey sports books at a time when Pennsylvania wasn't legalized. And then once Pennsylvania was legalized, he had uh, different options and different books in New Jersey that he didn't have in Pennsylvania. I sat down with him at that Jersey house. I stayed with him. College football Saturday, NFL Sunday, fired up all his screens. At the time, he had TVs. And uh, um, up pops his 65-inch monitor with his eight books. And I was like, it was so different from my setup. It was like a just a total, you know, war room. And I see him pop up the eight books, and I just quickly do some math, and I go, whoa, there's $800,000 just sitting on the screen, 800 grand right in front of me. And I was like, holy smokes, like, you know, this is cool because this isn't what my setup is like. Mine is very different, but effective in, a di in different ways, right? And that's, again, speaks to the power of collaboration in the group. You got Kenny with his setup following and doing what he's doing. You got me and my setup, you know, doing what I'm doing, put the strategies together, you know, combine that with the hundreds of people that are in the group. And you obviously can get, can get some really great success. But watching that all go down in real time, um, and what he's doing and then put that extra layer where you go, this isn't even where he lives. This is a house that he bought to have a second setup. So you asked me, what's the next step? The next step for me will be probably having another setup like this somewhere else and wow. where and where that is and why it's there isn't fully determined. But I think that, you know, those are the things from, you know, a, a long-term sort of infinite sports betting mindset, you go, okay, I don't want to limit myself in any capacity. I want to have the ability to, maybe it's Arizona, maybe it's somewhere else in this, in, in, in Canada, I'm not sure, but you have that set up, set up somewhere else so that, you know, you can take advantage of different lines in different areas. Hey, you know, if you love the condo living, there are plenty of condos in the city of Toronto. There you go. You'd love to. You'd love to swing by the setup in Toronto. I, right? I wouldn't mind. You know, maybe an NFL Sunday morning or something like that. You know, that might yeah. be. A, that might be a fun time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. I. I. I that, that's wow. What. A, what a step to take, right? To have a, a. A property, a home, a place designed just for sports betting. You know, for right. you to go to. Just a, what a what a what a thing to have. But you know, I think a lot of people, of our viewers and listeners, our audience out there, is probably thinking, like you kind of alluded to earlier, like. Holy crap! I I don't have that. I don't have access to that. I can't do that. Um, and maybe this isn't for me because of that reason. Uh, but I would say, you know, it it is about what you do got and what you don't got. You know, or not about what you don't got. Um, and there are ways to find success without any of that stuff, or you know, with a much uh, scaled down version, um, you know, or, you know, just working with what you have around the house. Uh, you know, a lot of people out there might have, you know, a computer or two, or maybe you've got like a monitor kicking around that, that you could set up, set up with a computer. Um, so, you know, uh, with, with that in mind, I am going to show you my setup, which is not impressive in any way. <laughs> it is a very, uh, easy, to create a setup that I think maybe a lot of you out there could probably um, do all on your own. In fact, you a lot of people out there could probably do a lot better than what I'm doing um, all on their own. So I'll just give you guys a quick peek. Um, and, you know, I would love to, to build up um, to what you have there, Pace, and, and sort of what Kenny has. Um, you know, I, I have the room for it, uh, but, you know, it's just not, um, not, not something that's currently in my budget. Uh, but, um, maybe one day and, you know, here's what I'm starting with. Uh, so here it is. Nope. Got a Mac. Laptop. Got a couple of monitors attached to it. And I've got a laptop. Um, 
I used, and there we go. I got one very small, tiny TV by today's standards. I think it's like a 30 inch or, or you know, 37 inch TV, not very big at all. Um, and you know, that's, that's my setup. It's, it's not much compared to, to what you've got there, Pace, but using things like the Google Chrome extension that allows you to have multiple browsers, uh, browser windows open in one screen and taking those monitors, which were like, you know, a hundred bucks, 150 bucks and attaching them to, to the, uh, I, I can attach them to the laptop that I have, or I can attach them to my Mac. I can, you know, go back and forth and do it however I want. Um, but, you know, it allows me to keep several browser windows open. Uh, it, you know, I can watch uh, the live streams on my laptop while I have all of those browsers open. I can throw on my game of choice. I can't watch nine games or, or more all at once, but I can throw on whatever game I'm into in the moment. Typically one of my Toronto sports teams or, you know, something else, a, a particular game I'm interested in following maybe that night. And I can just throw that on and have it in the background. Um, but, you know, because I am participating in a stream and I do know that Pace and Kenny are both there on the other end with eyes on, you know, 18 games between them, possibly, <laughs> you know, I know that I don't have to worry about watching that game. And I'm hearing, you know, what's happening in each of these games, or at least I'm hearing the important moments that are taking place in those games and knowing, oh, you know, we're now nearing, you know, uh, five minutes left in the third period in that hockey game. And now is a crucial time to dial in or, you know, we're, we're getting close to the end of something. And, and now, you know, I need to make sure I'm paying attention to what's being said on the stream. And while all that's going on, I can track and look at the lines changing, look at the various books I have available to me. And on top of all that too, I can use them. Certain books are really great for tracking games, right? And so I can just track a game on a book. I don't have to watch it, but I can track it and I can see where we're at for time, what the score is, you know, uh, depending on, on what, you know, we're talking about, whether it's, you know, uh, hockey shots on goal, whether it's basketball and we're talking about fouls and three point percentages and all the sort of statistics that maybe I might need to uh, apply some of the strategies that I've been taught through in play life. And so, you know, it is a very sort of uh, a basic bare bones setup. Would I like it to be better and greater one day? Absolutely. But this is what I'm working with for now. And I've been able to find success just with that. So I don't yeah. need all of that um, other equipment. It's, it's, a, it's a yes, I would like to have, but it's not necessarily a must have. So for all of you out there who are thinking, oh, man, you know, after seeing Kenny set up and seeing Pace's set up and thinking, no, there's no way I can, I can, I can do something like that or I can be successful betting on sports because I don't have that. I am telling you, you just saw what I'm working with and it ain't much. And I've found <laughs> that's that. Yeah. There's also something very key about your setup, which is really unique. That would be something that I don't think a lot of people would expect. And it also speaks to the latency issue that we've touched on in our podcast before, but your table, your desk, your devices, they are not pointed at your TV. They are not pointed at my TV, no. Um, and so I actually, it's funny you bring that up because I just made the change not that long ago. It was only about maybe three, four weeks ago that I made the change. Um, I did have it where I was eyes on the TV. And, um, you know, so if I'm, you know, looking straight forward, I had all of my screens in front of me like this on my table. And then I had the TV behind it, right in the background. But what I found is that when I was sitting in my chair a lot of times, I actually wasn't able to see the game because my Mac desktop is so big, right? That, that screen is so big. So oftentimes it was actually cutting off half of my TV right. and I wasn't, I wasn't actually able to see it. So now I can sort of just do a little sort of side kind of pivot where I've got, you know, my, my screens on one side and my other eye on the, on my television. So it sort of works. It, 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 it's working for me right now. And it's, it's working a little bit better where I can actually watch the game when I want to and then focus on the books when I need to. Yeah, and that's that's interesting too because you can tell by the way Kenny's setup is. He's got that crazy like metal mount thing yeah. that mounts his TV, but his his books are not at eye level. He looks up at his books and his mm -hmm. you can see his his chair is quite reclined. But it's like, you know, this is the games, this is the books and it's a window 
to to watch you know what's what's on there in front of him and that's kind of the point is he's set up something that's really obviously elaborate but what fits his conditions his comfort and his success and the actual real take home with all of this it isn't about we already said it's not about you know it's about what you have what you don't but it's about setting up the infrastructure and equipment which sometimes isn't much like i said it could just be a freaking cell phone but when you enter that arena, that area where you are making value wagers, wagers that return profit over the long term, you've entered that part of your home or that part of your you know environment that means business. And that says a lot. You know, you aren't going to bet down at the park, um, uh, you know, under a tree or while you're tanning or whatever. I'm not saying you can't. But that's a lot of recreational stuff. Whereas you can tell at your setup, you know, it's it doesn't look like Kenny's setup, obviously. But when you sit down there, it's it's go time, it's business, and and that's pretty obvious. And I think that that says a lot um, from a mindset standpoint. You know, when you're sitting in that chair, it's it's really for one reason: it's money making time. Whether you win or lose, you're buckled into that that sort of you know environment, and and that gets your mental focus, and 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 that's a really important part of um, setting up your equipment and infrastructure. I do want to say um, we're touching on, you know, you don't need all this and all that kind of stuff. Well, the flip side of this is you might not even be a, a, a sports better, a pro sports better. And you go, well, I just love sports and this setup's so cool. So people think about, you know, the dens and the man caves for lack of a better term uh, when they're setting this stuff up. Um, I was in a situation where I went through a lot of di different product options and we're going to set up a storefront so that you can actually access a lot of these products that we do have that Kenny and I do have so that you can participate in, in something similar. But if you have a setup like yours, Shane, it looks like you're almost in like a basement or a room that could be dark. Yep. You can get really, really, really high quality projectors and do the whole setup with, with instead of it being on nine different screens, you still have the same device that flips from one to nine and the big in the, the big one in the top left with the, the games around them, all that you can get that whole setup using a projector. If you're in a basement that can be totally dark and that is my exact same setup. Kenny's exact same setup, just as effective, just as high quality uh, for far, far cheaper. You can get projectors that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, but what I'm referencing is something that's probably closer to about 10,000 all in. Um, you know, versus what Kenny and I would have paid. So that option for a very elaborate setup does exist if you have the right space for it. I, oh, wow. Okay. I think I'm going to probably be revisiting this conversation with you Pace, at some point down the line and mm -hmm. offline because I do have a basement. You're absolutely yeah. right about that. I'm in my basement. And uh, yeah, I just have these two very small windows, right? Uh, you know, that, that are sort of mandatory windows for, for basement to be up to code. And yeah, I could very easily sort of block them out and, uh, and have it where, yeah, I've got, you know, a type of projector system. Yeah. Hmm. You've, you've got yeah. the wheels turning now. Right? So I'm yeah. Like, well, hmm. One of the big things about the matrix. So the, the matrix is the thing that switches all the screens up. One of the big things about that particular device is that the one that Kenny and I have, they ensure that when you go to the different modes, that it's broadcast exactly on that one screen so it communicates to that one screen it doesn't communicate to the communicates to the whole wall but it's broadcasting it on that one screen when you switch to a projector as an option you can now buy matrixes that are very cheap because they don't need to communicate with nine different screens they just put the picture up on the wall so when you switch to a feed of nine games it's very simple and it doesn't have to be in a very specific space. It just needs to throw it up there. So those ones are a lot more affordable, like a thousand dollars or less just for that, those matrix solutions. Wow. You know, see, this is the thing, right? There are all of these solutions, you know, that, that are more affordable than you can go very, very elaborate, you know, or, you know, you can go very, very, you know, low tech um, or find, you know, somewhere in between. Uh, and and it can you can still find success doing that. I think though one of the things that you pointed out that is probably the most important aspect of the setup is that when you enter it, you are in your space, you are in your working environment, and 
it is conducive to you being locked in. That's right. everything, man. It really is. I think, I think that is what it comes down to eh? You know, so you can have the, you know, the most elaborate equipment, you know, like, like you and Kenny have, or you can have a very sort of, you know, a uh, uh, bare bones setup like mine and you can, you know, use it in a way that still allows you to find the lines you need to find, keep an eye on the games you need to keep an eye on, track the games however you need to and, and stay locked in. Um, and, you know, again, it doesn't it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. And if you do want to get to something very cool, like like what Pace and Kenny have, well, that's something that you can work towards as your as your bankroll grows. But you can't start growing that bankroll until you have a setup that allows you to dial in and focus and, and start building it up. Um, Pace, is there anything uh, else important you think we missed here in this conversation about setups? <laughs> I think I've seen some pretty crazy setups with InPlay Live. One of the things we zipped by on Kenny's was that that sort of vertical screen that he has. I've seen a setup in the InPlay Live community where someone has that so that they have our Discord chat room blown up in their face so that they don't miss anything. So it's almost like a chat room screen that the 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 vertical one that Kenny had there. I think those are really really cool to have, but this is what I I really want to close on with respect to setups. If you're a member of InPlay Live you've probably got a cool setup that has changed over the course of time. If you have any photos, any videos of your setup, we want to see them. So send them to us, tag us on, on Instagram. Uh, it's at InPlay Live. Um, and we would love to check those out and potentially have you on the show at some point. Uh, that would be number one. And then number two, if you're not a member of InPlay Live, but you've got a really cool sports den or anything like that, same same thing goes. Uh, some of our setups from myself, from Kenny, and from some of our members have been featured on some of the, the biggest Instagram platforms um, in, in the world uh, relating to sports betting. Uh, because when people see it, it's obviously pretty crazy. So if you guys have anything cool, we would we would definitely love to see it. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Pace, because yeah, I think there's 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 some really awesome setups that I've seen from people in the community, and uh, you know, I would love for people to be able to sort of check them out too. So uh, yeah, there, there's some really really cool stuff, and like you mentioned, you know, featured in in uh, I think like uh, BR betting and and other sort of platforms uh, on Instagram. So it's just really really cool stuff. Um, all right, well. I hope that all of you out there have found this uh, informative. I hope that, you know, you think it's it's a really cool thing to have if you can aspire to it. But I don't want anyone out there to think that they have to have the most elaborate setup to be a successful sports better. You just have to have something that, that really works for you and allows you to kind of be fully in business when it comes time for betting on sports. All right. Well, Pace, till next week. Keep eating those books, buddy. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Lines. Remember to like, download, and subscribe. We are on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcasts. Have a betting story or want to be featured on our podcast? Drop a note in the comments below. And if you want to join in Play Live, use promo code Behind the Lines.